What are we gonna do about this? Hmm. Let's uh let's check out the React admin docs for um so the thing we are updating. Let's go back to the code really quick first. So, the context, right, of what we're trying to update is this array input. Okay. So the array input is a control provided by React Admin that takes, um, that finds a data element in the record, and that da data element should be an array of things, so a list of things, right? And then it says, for each thing, show a set of controls, like inputs or whatnot, for that, and we have this all like configurable, right? So, in this case, we have 1,840 items in a list, and so we have uh, a bunch of things in here um, repeated 1,800 times. Now, are there variants of array input that we could use? that would show us like a subset that we can navigate through? Or is there something else like that? Um, so let's take a look. So here's array input. This is the thing we're using here. To edit arrays of data embedded inside of a record, array input creates a list of subforms. But it seems to be an issue to have 1800 subforms. Um, the first thing that comes to mind, like in terms of things we could just do, although I suspect there may be problems that would keep it from working, was we could introduce our own um, pagination control here. And then um, it would be challenging, right? Because array input wants to do its own thing to read. So source here is like the name of the field inside of the record. And it wants to pull that out wants to pull out the, the values at that location inside of the record. If we could somehow like pass in or take a, a, a slice of the list, which is to say, you know, like the first hundred items, the next hundred items, so on and so forth, um, and then have controls, we could do that. Maybe there's something in React Admin that would uh, just let us do that. So we can, we can look at symbol form iterator for details about how to customize the subform layout. Uh, array input accepts the common input props except for format and parse. Format and parse are um, props that you can pass into a lot of the different inputs types to like control how the data coming from the record is then handed to the control that shows it and how to take the value coming from the control to go back into the record. That doesn't work for array input. Um, okay, that's not really relevant to what we're looking for. So props here, it just says it accepts common input props. Okay. So are there is there another kind of array input that exists that would let us paginate? There's select array input that gets us a kind of like a multiple select thing. That's not what we want. Um, there's a tree input in the, pre the the enterprise version. There's a reference array input. We don't want that because we're not... Ref so the reference stuff is like, oh, there's this other record that exists and there's a reference to it. Um, the things that we have inside of the transcript so like the segments of the transcript, those are not independent records. They exist inside of the uh, stream record itself. Um, what else? Turn these down a little bit more. Hmm. We might have to make something custom. Let's 
let's take a look at, uh, so what is the thing inside of, let's go back one page. So the thing inside of array input, oh, didn't actually go back, there we go, array input. Um, the thing that we're then building off of is a simple form iterator. So in the code, we have this form iterator. This is our custom uh, component that adds some some of our controls that we want and then uses simple form iterator. Now, that does mean that array input doesn't in and, in and of itself take what's inside of it and repeat it. It delegates the repeating part to simple form iterator, apparently. So maybe there's something uh, we can customize with this component. You can also use it within an array input context containing a field array. Requires no prop by default. It expects an array of inputs as children. I see. Right, right. So the, the things that it's going to repeat. consistent with what we see in the UI, right? Where we see all of the entries in a single line. When when we do see it. Disable remove, disable reorder, disable clear, disable add, add button. Children is the list of input elements. Simple form iterator also accepts form data to the consumer as a child. When it used inside a form iterator, form data consumer provides two additional properties to its children function. Scoped form data and get source. It seems like maybe we need a customized uh, form iterator. Are there other form iterators listed in the docs? Okay, so no. So I think probably the next step is to go look at the, the implementation of Simple Form Iterator um, to figure out how it works right now. And then use that to uh, decide how we want to implement something that's gonna only show, uh, to, to paginate, right? So that we're only showing a certain number of things at a time which I'm pretty sure is the issue at hand, right? Um, that we're just trying to show too many elements. We're trying to show like, we're trying to add like 8,000 or more things into the DOM at once, which actually doesn't sound like a whole lot, but with all of the like React stuff, I don't know. I wish it would just work, but it doesn't seem to. Seems to want to uh, hang. So I think this is the right thing. React diamond packages, RA UI, material UI, SRC input, array input, simple form iterator. Okay, so we're le reading all these different props. Then we use array input to get information. We use form context, use translate, we get the record. Okay, so there's lots of stuff here. Where do we actually, 
Okay, simple form iterator context.provider. And then we have something called root. And then we have a UL. Fields.map. Huh. Simple form iterator item. Somewhere we have to be reading from source. Okay, here's the, the interface. Don't need to see that right now. We have root, and this is the just the uh, a styled div. So it has a bunch of CSS declared here. So we don't we don't need to see this. Does this work? Okay, here, here we go. So we get the records here, right? And wait, so where are we getting index? Oh, really? Oh, so this is the item, right? So it's confusing that this is called fields because this is like rows. Right? I think it is anyway. We're mapping over because we're using index to index into the records list. So this must be each individual like form row. Uh, I don't know, is this even legible on stream? I could I can make this bigger. So presumably simple form iterator item is returning like uh, a list item in LI to match with the UL that it's being wrapped in. Uh, where is fields coming from? Da, 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 da. Okay, so it is coming from use array input. So that's, that's problematic for trying to like Like it doesn't seem like there's a good way to use this, but somehow modify its behavior. I think what we'll have to end up doing is just like copy the whole thing and rewrite it slightly. Right, because ultimately it's the contents of fields here that dictates what is shown, like what is rendered out. implementation of simple form iterator. Uh, it's over in this file, I think. Yep. Are there other options, right? So I basically only considered one option at this point, which is to, let me go back here, um, which is to keep everything else the same way it is. I, again, I'm assuming the issue is just that the amount of data, the 1800 items means that the, this is gonna slow to a crawl. Is there some other option other than using the 
array input and having the items here like this. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with, because this is an open source project and we're using it anyway, to copy the, the component into the project and modify it to suit the purpose we, we have. Um, except for the fact that if we want to ever upgrade React Admin, it's another thing that might have to be updated and like made to con continue to work. It's just another thing to maintain versus using the things that are already in Re React Admin that the people that are working on that project are going to make sure it, like all work together anyway. Um, so that's the why you would want to not do what I'm thinking about doing. Um, let's go ahead and step over this line. So this, this in and of itself is fine, right? Because nothing actually happens yet because we, we've essentially like something got set, but the Dom hasn't re-rendered, right? So we can, like, we can step over this and we can just like run it. And now we're, we're not paused, but the, the browser is <laughs> inundated with so much stuff. Can we, can we pause at this point? Or are we already too far in to be able to pause? Yeah. So over in the console, nothing. I'll even take away that. There we go. Let's go. Debug script? What does that do? Yeah. Ooh. So some stuff happened. So here we go. So we can see all the things. Um, this, this is not all the things because I'm pretty sure we went beyond 652 seconds. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, we're inside of this. Um, I think this is probably something inside of React given how everything starts with unstable. It's inside of our, our bundled JavaScript. Um, yeah. So if we can get the uh, the browser's uh, JavaScript to pause, we can see, you know, making some progress. But this is not this is not okay. <laughs> and you can see when I scroll, I mean, there, there's a lot. Bug script again. There's just a lot, and we're we're not even. Here we go. So that got us to. Wait, is this even sorted the right? It's not even sorted the right way. Oh, right, 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 right. So a thing we haven't done, the the transcription process, it generates the start and end time, time stamps relative to the file that it processed, right? So all of these are in the right order, but what we need to do is we need to go and adjust the start and end time stamps relative to each other. I think we never bothered to do that. Um, I think that's something we need to do in, how, how are we gonna do that? Hmm. I think we might just have to do that in the front end. And I think that's that's not too bad to do. How are we gonna do that? Hmm. Okay, so now we have two problems. One problem is we we can't show all the stuff on the screen at the same time. If we uh, if we unpause, will we eventually get through this? Hmm. No. Hmm. 
We are making progress. Looks like I'm talking about the emotes <laughs> for the channel right here. Oh, yeah. All right. Hmm. Well. So, two problems. One problem is we do need some kind of pagination in this view um, or something. I still want all of these things, right? Um, it's interesting. Maybe there's an opportunity here. So notice like in this section here, all these segments, it just says you, 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 you. Um, I wonder, I mean, there was probably just silence for a few seconds. So like from, Three forty-seven or four thirty-seven? Uh, wait, what? Four thirty-seven, four thirty. Okay, yeah. So like this section here. I wonder if we could condense some of the segments. Um, right. So maybe. One of the things we could do is reduce this, the number of quote unquote records, right? Segments here to a more manageable number. I don't know that we need like four second, like we don't need down to the second when stuff was said. What is this like five seconds? Maybe we could combine these together in the in somewhere in the uh, in the back end. Like if we had like there we go with like again. If we had say thirty second segments, how many segments is that out of a three hour video? Well, there's. 60 minutes an hour, 120, 180, about 360 segments is a lot less than 1800. So I found a different way of potentially addressing our problem. Instead of dealing with uh, making, <laughs> making it practical to have so many records in the front end, let's reduce the number of entries or records segments or whatever word we want to use and uh, produced by the back ends. So to do that, uh, we go back, I guess, to the uh, transcription API, you know, and uh, think about how I want to do this. So we are calling whisper. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if there is a, uh, I'm going to pull up the uh, OpenAI Whisper docs. There might be a command line argument that would increase the, the size of the segments that identifies. Because if we could just do that there rather than trying to, you know, combine the data that it produces, that would be easier, right? Uh, I think there is documentation on the command line arguments here somewhere. Da, 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 da. I think, yeah, you could run this. Tokenizer.py has a list of languages, but it might also have other command line argument things. No. Maybe main.py, transcribe CLI, okay. So I'll have some Python to mix in with our Rust and TypeScript. So 
So there should be a function called CLI. There it is. And this defines all the arguments that it takes. Yes, Python's great. For a number of years, Python was the, the main backend language I used. With little bits of, uh, let's see. I don't think we ended up using Clojure. Well, we had a little Clojure uh, and a little Scala and some JavaScript um, for, on Node.js. Uh, originally like running a server, Anaconda. <laughs> Anaconda is a thing. I don't know if you're making a joke or not, but Anaconda is a thing in the Python ecosystem. It's like a, um, uh, what is Anaconda again exactly? It's like, not exactly a package manager, Anaconda Python. What's trying a joke? <laughs> well, I'll have you know, it's not just a joke. <laughs> You've used it one hour, yeah. Um, it's a thing. Yeah, Anaconda.org. Yeah, it's like a repository. Like if you if you do like a lot of like analysis machine learning stuff, you'll see this come up as like, oh, get this thing from Anaconda. Um, at least back in the day. I don't know if it's a thing anymore, but some stuff was there. Okay, can we, no. can we change the, so we have patience, patience value to use in beam decoding, length penalty, optional token length penalty coefficient with a link to Arvix, great. Uh, is there something that will allow us to tell it to try to go for longer segments. Clip timestamps. Uh, okay, no. Um, threads, max words per line. No, I don't care about any of those things. Word timestamps. No, I don't want word timestamps. I want the opposite of that. Foxy blue. What does it mean? Temperature, best of beam size. Number of beams and beam search. Length penalty, suppressed tokens, initial prompt, conditional previous text. Huh. Verbose output format. We're using JSON. Okay, I don't see anything that would really help us with saying like condense down the segments any. So I'm, I'm guessing that's just not an option. So we'll, we'll do it the hard way. Uh, I seem to recall that we had um, in the Python version of this, something very similar, right? So a lot of this code, there was originally a Python version of it that's uh, hiding away inside of um, video processing projects here. We have a Django app that was the original version of this. Uh, and so if we look in here, I think what I was doing, yeah, group segments into 30 second chunks, right? And then, so we basically said like, hey, do we have 30 seconds yet? Append it to the group, and then combine all the text in each segment, and take the start and ends from the beginning and ends, and yeah. So we're gonna do something similar, but in Rust. So that's gonna be inside of, again, back to transcription API. What's the jump? When did I say jump? Mm. 
have I recall saying, you know, you know what would be really good? <laughs> Maybe you heard wrong. What would be really good is to have like a live transcription of everything I say. Um, because I swear, uh, I forget things so fast. Like I'll, I'll be saying something and I'll, I'll like jump over to something else and I'll have forgotten what I said like five seconds ago. Uh, so it's not all on <laughs> Maybe you heard wrong, maybe I've just forgotten what I was saying. I think I was saying something about jumping over back to the Rust code to implement the grouping of transcription pieces together. Um, so in this code, we're, we're running the command line utility called Whisper. Uh, something about 30 seconds? Yes. So in the... Can I hit Control Shift T and go back? In this Python file, what we were doing was we were going and getting the segments from the OpenAI Whisper utility, and we were like looping over the segments, and we were saying, okay, here's a chunk. Append the segment to the chunk. If um, Segment that n is not none, and segment n dot seconds is divisible. This is weird, but I, I guess the idea, yeah, chunks. To we're basically um, making a chunk where a chunk is a group of segments, so that the total number of segments is thirty seconds, right? And then once we have those chunks, then we take all of those grouped segment. Uh, pieces and then we combine all the text together and we set the start to be the start of the first chunk of, ta of transcription and the end is the end of the last bit the last chunk of the group right and then we have that group text that we append to the list so this is the Python version of this and then I'm gonna go over and uh, find that other file I had open oh it's gone find it again we're gonna do the same thing in Rust, roughly. Yep. So here, we are running the Whisper command line utility, passing a bunch of different options to it to tell it like where the files are that it's going to process, um, or rather, where to write the output to, how to write the output, what the task is, to use the GPU that we're using presumably in English and that the audio is coming from standard input and, and we, we run that. It's called whisper detection is the, the variable that we're putting the status of the running of the command in. And then we wait for it to run and then we make sure that it did run successfully. And then we look to where it wrote the JSON file that has the result that's the transcription path. And then we read uh, from transcription path, the JSON that's inside of the file. And then we parse the JSON. So we, we take the, you know, it's just a, it's a bunch of text that's in a certain format. And we say, okay, here's the format, the JSON format. Go ahead and turn that into um, a value inside of our program that we can then use. And then we say, okay, well that, format should have a key called segments that we read from. And that segments uh, key inside of the object transcription should be an array. And so we'll, we'll grab that array of segments or as, uh, as it's called in Rust, it's called a vector, uh, which actually, as I think about it, it's kind of confusing, right? For math, a vector is, you think of a vector as like it's a, a direction in space, but a vector is, of course, uh, a set of three numbers in three-dimensional space, uh, x, y, and z. But if you have an arbitrary number of dimensions, you have an arbitrary list of values, and that's why a vector is a list, I think. Anyway. Okay, so we have the list of segments, or the vector of segments. Um, we make it into something that's iterable, that is, we can um, iterate or loop over, we can look at each value in it. And this is how we're processing the segments. So we're, we're saying, hey, okay, so the, the segment has a start 
and it is a floating point number, and we convert it into a different format. <laughs> math ain't mathing for you. That's fair. Um, it's just the words from math that are re reused. Um, so this is this is kind of the part where we go through the segments and we are cleaning up how the values are presented. So we're converting um, numbers into a, a string representation called a duration. Uh, and we are just structuring the data in a certain way. And then we're filtering out um, if, if any of the segments had problems, we're just dropping them out by filtering them. And then we collect all that all those values back into uh, a, a very similar variable, something with the same name, but slightly different called segments. And then that is what we return as JSON. So somewhere here, probably right here, what we want to do uh, is this actually the first code that I've written today where <laughs> an hour and 40 minutes in? Um, yeah, maybe just about. So um, Copilot here trying to guess what I want. That's not what I want. What do I want? I want to uh, group together all the segments. Um, I want to really what I want to do is I want to say um, find good words. <laughs> find good words for this. I want to combine the vector of segments so that each new segment is composed is at most 30 seconds long and is composed of the original segments, right? So I want to combine uh, the segments, but not into a single string. Uh, it's into a new 30 second segments. There we go. It eventually got got words. Now, can Copilot do this? Let's see what it does. Okay, so this is interesting. So again, it makes an iterator, and maybe we can actually merge this with the code before. Vector combo number two without fries, please. <laughs> mm. we're, we're combining a lot of vectors here. It is a vector combo. And there are no fries in sight, so here you go. Here's your order. <laughs> so, uh, let mute segments equal segments. So this is this is declaring a mutable variable. So something that we'd be able to modify um, as is in the future, like later later on the code if we wanted to, which I don't think we'd want to. Um, this, this constructs, it takes our vector of segment, so a segment vector, so a, a list of segment data types, so a list of segments. It makes it into something that's iterable, which is a different type of thing, not, not a vector, an iterable. Uh, and then it uses fold. Fold might actually be something that exists in Rust. If it is, presumably it does what it does in a lot of languages, which would be you take uh, multiple vet like you take two values from a list and you have a function that can be used to combine those values together so is that what it's doing here it's saying okay um, take segments fold with an empty vector and then okay so we're we're combining values from segments into a new vector by taking the list of segments and a segment. And we say, okay, start is potentially, if we can find a start value in the segment we're working on, we grab that, otherwise we bail out and say, okay, we, we're not adding a new value. Same thing for ends. 
Like a hotkey? <laughs> What's like a hotkey? Uh, and we do the same thing for ends, and we do the same thing for text. So we're we're trying to pick out the start time and the end time and the text value uh, from the current segment we're evaluating. Hey, the Martinator, how's it going? Using two values from our list. Um, yeah, so there's there's this idea um, kind of from functional program. Hey, Lady Versailles, welcome, welcome. Cool emote, <laughs> cool emotes. How's it going? Um, so there's a bunch of really common uh, functions you see in a different a bunch of different programming languages. Uh, functions or methods or something, something that you can do, some operation you can do on a list or something that's list-like, whether that's a vector or an iterable or whatever it is. Um, there are things like map uh, and reduce, um, uh, fold left, fold right, um, filter. So those are those things exist in uh, you know Python and Rust and uh, JavaScript and thus type, TypeScript and oodles of programming languages. They're a super common kind of way of thinking about processing lists. How was my weekend? Uh, my weekend was okay. Um, it's not over yet. <laughs> this is still the weekend, um, but so far so good. Had some fun. Uh, hanging out in uh, Foxy Blue's stream yesterday, suggesting a bunch of bad choices in Baldur's Gate. And then uh, did a little video editing. Got that, uh, hey, Kingslayer, how's it going? Just uh, <laughs> reading chat and uh, trying to, to answer questions. Welcome, new people. Oh, hey, look, viewer account went up. Hello, people. Welcome. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, uh, where was I in my explanation? Uh, I think that that kind of sums it up. Though. So there's there's a bunch of common ways of processing lists of things. Making you foxy make bad choices. Yes. Uh, and then lurking over in uh, Jake Jardashian's stream last night as well. Was was my Saturday. I did get the, uh, good, it does help explain, that's great. <laughs> I did get the, uh, the first Power World video up on YouTube uh, last night. The other ones are waiting. I haven't figured out when I'm gonna schedule them up. There is a YouTube channel. Hello, YouTube people that are watching this in the future. <laughs> Recently hit 150 subscribers. There's a link to that. There's also a Discord. While I'm plugging things, I might as well go all in. There we go. Uh, and of course, because I tabbed out, I lost the suggestion. There we go, it's back. Okay, so uh, I'm sitting here trying to analyze Hey, Foxy Blue. <laughs> uh, ah, you gotta sub me. You have a YouTube also. Well, hi. The more the merrier. Um, I At some point, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it, but the whole point of like all this code that I'm doing is to make what I'm uploading to YouTube better um, by helping me like do edits and stuff. Right now, it's just like I take the one hour in between my breaks on my stream and I just kind of cut it up. I put an outro thing at the end and maybe adjust audio a little bit and I just upload it. Um, but I do want to do like taking snippets of the stream that are like how I was just explaining stuff and just like put that together. Um, and I want to use AI to help me do it. Um, and that that's, that's where I'm going with all this code that I'm writing. Um, yeah, I don't know long term. Like, I think it might might make sense at some point to have a separate YouTube channel just for like the coding stuff. That's for like maybe like do it like a gaming one and a coding one for like the edited stuff when I get to that point. But for now, uh, I definitely don't have time to do all that. So I just put everything into that vods channel. 
Okay. So, uh, again, I'm trying to analyze what Copilot is suggesting here. Yeah, editing for YouTube is a pain. Uh, yep. We'll love to see you use your products. Um, I don't know that I have anything called a product just, just yet. I do have a thing that I was working on uh, earlier in the year on stream, which is like a calorie counting uh, web app. Uh, but right now it's just locked down for me and some friends to use uh, because it's, it's, it's pretty janky. But I have been using it daily, and at some point I'll get back to working on it. Uh, so this takes this information it's getting from the, the segment it's considering as it's processing all the segments. It, it calculates the duration by subtracting start from end, if that makes sense. Uh, for some reason, we are saving start again. <laughs> You're just watching me write hieroglyphics. Uh, well, right now it's mostly me talking and the computer writing code, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so we're making um, a separate variable called start that is a mutable thing that we're initializing to be the start value we got from the segment we're evaluating. And then what we're doing is we're looping while start is less than end. We're saying, okay, well, obviously when we start looking at a segment, this is not gonna work. This is not gonna work at all. How is this supposed to work? Start is less than end, mute end equals start plus 30. If end is greater than start plus duration, and equal start plus duration. What? But start plus duration. Duration is just in plus start. This is silly. <laughs> uh, segment is some JSON. We push it into segments. Where are segments coming from? Uh, maybe? No, this doesn't make sense. Now, what, what else you got, Copilot? Okay, so this one. No. Let's do this. I think I, I gave it too much to do on one go. So if we combine the segments um, into groups. So this is how I approached the, this problem when I was doing it in Python. So let's combine the segments into uh, groups. I can I can type maybe uh, where <laughs> uh, each no each group is. Thirty seconds of total. Thirty seconds long. There we go. Yeah, five segments. Well, so the issue is that right, like right now, the tool that I'm using, Whisper, is outputting like segments of the transcription that are very short, like one or two seconds, with just a few words in them. Uh, the issue, uh, and and because of that, when we look at like three hours of video, there's like thousands of segments, and it's just too much. Um, so what I want to do, and I suspect this is just not going to be able to, uh, let's see, how's this going to work? How is this going to work? <laughs> Segments chunk map, funny. Okay, I think I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have to write something. Uh, okay, so how do I write rest again? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take the segments. Um, I mean, we're, we, we can really just combine these things together, right? Because what we wanna do is we wanna take the original uh, vector of segments and we maybe do one a fold. Right, hype, write it, write it, yeah. Um, how do I take just, uh, oh yeah, control right arrow. 
I think I want to do something like this. I just don't want the rest of what Copilot is suggesting because it's just it's just not right. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. Um, see, I don't think I don't think fold is the right operation though. So what what's the documentation saying? How does fold work in Rust? Folds every element into an accumulator by applying an operation, returning the final result. Fold takes two arguments, an initial value, right? So it'll, that it's that empty vector is the initial value. Oops, I lost the, the docs, there we go. And a closure with two arguments. So a closure with an S is, uh, is just a function um, that is embedded inside of another function uh, that has lexical scope, which we don't need to talk about anyway. Uh, with two arguments, an accumulator and an element, right? So we have the segments accumulator, and then we have the single element. The closure returns the value that the accumulator should have for the next iteration, right? Can, can we use fold in this context? Um, basically what we need to do is we need to say, So we start with the empty vector, and what we want to have as a result, like what is what is the end result when we get to here? What is this supposed to look like, right? So we want to have something where we have a list, and inside of the list are other lists, right? And inside of each of the list is a set of segments, right? Segment one, segment two, segment three, segment four, something like this. So in other words, we have groups of segments and we have a list of groups of segments with um, a constraint or a condition that each group has, let's say, at least 30 seconds of duration, right? So how do we do that? Um, well, Probably what we want to do is we want to start with a vector that contains a, a, a single empty vector. Whoops. Control Z, Control Z. There, Control V. Uh, oops, too, too much copy. Hold on. Control C, Control V. There we go. I guess, well, that's the thing. We don't know. We don't know how many segments, right? We don't know how many segments we're going to need. It depends on the data. That is the whole of the point is that we have to look at the data. We have to write code without knowing what the data looks like, just knowing its shape, the, um, the pattern or the kind of the structure of the data without knowing exactly how much data there is. And then write an algorithm that is going to, for whatever data there is, as long as it's you know in the same data structure, it will do the right thing. Um, and since I couldn't get Copilot to write <laughs> what I want, although uh, that's looking promising, but no, uh, we'll, we'll just do it by hand, right? So the very first time this runs, right? So when we come in here and we get to this line, the very first time with a, a list of segments, <laughs> then, uh, what will we have? Well, segments inside of our little function here, our closure, will be a vector with a single value inside of it, which will be an empty vector. And segment will be the very first segment in our original list of segments. And what we wanna do is we want to look at the last group of segments. Again, the idea with segments it's a vector of vectors. So it is a, a list of groups of segments and we wanna get the last group, right? So we wanna say something like, uh, let's mute, uh, not last segment, but something like last uh, group, or maybe last segment group to be really explicit about what we're, um, there we go, like that. Sort of like that. 
I don't think... I don't know if last mute is... Okay, apparently it is a thing. Returns a mutable pointer to the last item in the slice. Um, now, we don't want to use unwrap. That is... Uh, uh, it may panic. All right, we're going to have to take a break here in a minute. But before we do that, let's, let's see if we can actually make something happen. So last mute here is an option of a mutable thing. So what we can do is we can do uh, match. We're, we're gonna add some error handling here, right? Because, yeah, something like that, right? So either it has, either there is a last thing, which there all, always should be since we're starting with a last thing, um, in which case we'll get it. Otherwise, there's not a last thing, in which case we probably should just error because this shouldn't happen. So we should return um, I guess we need to just actually return um, we'll return an HTTP error. Now, looking at this, the first thing that occurs to me is what we should do is we should take this and move it to a separate function um, that has nothing to do with our HTTP handler. Like now now this, this function that we're in is doing way, 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 way too much. Too many different kinds of details, details going on in here. Um, so like if I saw uh, uh, someone was like, hey, can you review my code? Is this okay? No. <laughs> It's too much. It's way too much. It's hundreds of lines of stuff in one function doing too many different kinds of things. Like I just described this as an algorithm that I'm implementing. It should be in its own function somewhere else. Uh, but I'm not gonna deal with that now. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, what we're gonna do is now, now we have last segment group. So now we need some logic, right? To say, uh, say what we're gonna do, right? So, um, essentially, if I think what we want to say is we want to look at the total duration of the segments that are in last segment group. If um, if that's less than thirty seconds, is uh, less. Right. If the last segment group is less than 30 seconds long, then add the segment to it. Uh, and then, I guess we just return segments. 